Hi, I'm Shan Wu with a undercover of law hot take about the 25th Amendment. Why the 25th Amendment? First of all, I think everyone knows that is an amendment which talks about the process by which the president or the vice president uh, can be removed because they're incapacitated for some reason. Talking about that because there's actually been calls to apply that with regard to President Biden, which I find completely ridiculous for reasons we'll go into <laughs> if it's not obvious already. History of the 25th Amendment. It was put in there after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy to make sure that the process involved in such a tragedy, such an obvious incapacity, was going to be carefully set forth so there wouldn't be any questions about it. Interestingly enough, when President Ronald Reagan was the victim of an attempted assassination, he was shot, went to the hospital, had to undergo surgery. It was not invoked. Uh, there was a famous press conference where his chief of staff, Alexander Haig, said, quote, I'm in charge. Very controversial remark to make. He was probably trying to calm down people. But after all that back and forth, they didn't actually invoke the 25th Amendment. Now, it has been invoked, I think, only a total of about six times in history. And it happened when Nixon resigned. It happened when Vice President Agnew resigned. But the bulk of these times are really when there has been a medical procedure involved. So it happened uh, when Reagan had a medical procedure, not the assassination attempt surgery. And when the elder President Bush had to undergo a colonoscopy twice uh, in both of those instances, because he was temporarily unconscious from anesthesia, they used it there. It has never been used under this bogus notion that's coming out that a president looks bad, that they look incapacitated. And that's what's really frustrating about this talk. I mean, some of it is for obvious political reasons. I mean, there's this nonsense resolution that Representative Hill introduced in which he talks about it would be the Christian thing to do <laughs> to remove Biden. I mean, it's the Republicans cannot help but always invoke some sort of a Christianity when they want to do something that's blatantly political. But we'll put that aside for the moment. One thing that's particularly disturbing here is the amount of medical diagnoses that's weighing in here. I would say amateur, but it's not amateur. I mean, really, surprisingly to me, Dr. Sanjay Gupta weighed in on this in an editorial where he talked about looking at the different aspects that he sees from Biden's debate mentions things like his stiff gait, and again, as we talked about before, raises this possibility that, you know, maybe he should be tested, you know, for Parkinson's disease. Now, what's particularly ridiculous about this is, you may have noticed if you watch clips of the debate, uh, that President Biden's not jogging, he's not running around, he's not even walking very much, so there's nothing about the debate which suggests there's something wrong with his gait. I mean, people have seen him walking <laughs> for quite some time, and only now, like these professionals are weighing in, these medical professionals saying, oh, look at all these things put together. It really just smacks of the opportunism of jumping onto this media frenzy to have something to say. Now, I happen to have a lot of respect for Sanjay Gupta. I was very disappointed when he turned down the opportunity to be the Surgeon General of the United States, instead, you know, opting to continue his, I guess, private practice and media. And he puts forth observations in a very reasonable manner. But here, I just don't think it's appropriate to be weighing in like this. He puts it under the guise of, and we'll put up a video for you to take a look at what he says. He puts it under the guise of saying we just need more testing more testing needs to be done. But here's the thing. When Senator McConnell froze, obviously, twice, it was big headline news, McConnell couldn't seem to speak, he was gripping the lectern, that was not Dr. Gupta's reaction, rather demanding that there be more testing. And McConnell's a sitting United States senator. Could he do his job at that time? So take a listen to what Dr. Gupta said at that time about McConnell. Sanjay, you're a neurosurgeon. I don't want to be rude about it, but that's not somebody who just feels lightheaded. What, what do you see in, in the video of this latest episode? 
Yeah, I mean, what what we see is someone who essentially is is freezing, and and this is a term that's often used uh, when describing various neurological things. He's obviously freezing. He's not saying anything. His his uh, face is sort of frozen in that position. But also even his hands. If you look at that video, his hands are sort of really attached to the lectern. His aide comes over, tries to get him to raise his hand. He's sort of really holding on very closely. Um, it, it's very very tightly, I should say, to that lectern. You know, it's it. There's a lot of things that can sort of come to mind. The more you know about the various neurological conditions, the longer the list is. But certain things like stroke or things like that are probably less likely. He get he walks away and he's moving his arms and his legs as he walks away. Seizure is less likely uh, as well. Um, it's about 30 seconds where he appears to have some component of freezing. I think what really struck me and and uh, I think Manu alluded to this is that you know his aides don't seem that surprised by this. So we've seen this episode a couple of times, but you get the impression that it happens more often because this is something that they're used to to dealing with. And if I remember correctly, uh, as Manu has reported, last time it's not even clear that he saw a doctor after these episodes. So they they don't seem like they're that entirely surprising. So while it's, uh, you know, as you say, hard to watch, it doesn't seem like this is just lightheadedness, it seems to be something that is really ongoing. Someone who has a, a, a Parkinsonian-like condition, for example, whose medications are wearing off or, or something like that, uh, that's something that could sort of explain this behavior. But as I said, Jake, it's, it's a long list of possibilities here. So there, Gupta's observing, well, the people around him seem like it's no big deal. Maybe they've seen this before, expressing concern about him, but not kind of taking the stance of the public needs more testing. Now, granted, difference between a United States senator and the president of the United States. But this, to me, all falls into this aspect of jumping on the bandwagon, not for any real good purpose. It's just feeding the frenzy. Now, there's something called the Goldwater Rule, which only applies to psychiatrists. It was put forth by um, the American Psychiatric Association. This was way back <laughs> when Barry Goldwater was running. Uh, there had been a survey of psychiatrists who opined, some of them that he seemed perfectly fine mentally, and others opined that he seemed like a very dangerous person in terms of his uh, mental capacity, in terms of his possible mental diseases. Uh, because he was a real firebrand. He was very conservative, very out there. Since then, there's been a an ethical rule that says you should not give those sorts of diagnoses unless you've examined the patient. Obviously, if you'd examined them, the patient would have to waive the confidentiality. Let me be clear, that does not apply to what any doctors are doing on TV or what Sanjay Gupta did because he's not a psychiatrist. He's not weighing in on mental illness diagnostics. He's just weighing in on what he observes as a neurosurgeon, you know, what might be going on with Biden. But it's worth thinking about why we have that ethical rule prohibiting that sort of diagnosis. The ethical rule is there because people give great weight to a psychiatrist talking about a person's mental condition. They're also going to give great weight to a neurosurgeon who's on mass media all the time talking about medical conditions when he raises the idea that, oh, we really need to have more testing. Again, why wasn't that demanded when Mitch McConnell had that episode? It's fine by me if you want to say we need mandatory disclosure of medical records of presidential candidates and of presidents. It's not fine by me to only push for this after this feeding frenzy that's developed over that portion of the debate where Biden did a lousy job in that portion of the debate. Now, let's turn for a moment also to the Democratic pundits or former Democratic leaders, you know, asking for this type of, we're not asking for the 25th Amendment, but criticizing Biden continuously. In the interview with ABC, uh, Julian Castro is asked to comment on it, and I was just stunned at his continued criticism. The question that he was very critical on was when uh, President Biden was asked, what happens if you lose the election? You know, are you going to be okay with that? How, how do you feel? The point of that question being, obviously, do you have a good conscience going forward, despite the fact that people are criticizing your capacity to do the job? 
So what's Biden's answer? His answer is, if I gave it my all, I'll be okay with it. Take a listen to what Julian Castro has to say about that. I think the most chilling, when Stephanopoulos asked him, well, what if you lose to Donald Trump? Then how are you going to feel? And President Biden said, well, as long as I gave it my all, that basically that he would feel okay. That's not good enough for the American people. Castro calls that answer chilling. Really? Chilling? That's a chilling answer to say, if I gave it all, my all, I did my best, I'm going to be at peace with what I did? What kind of answer does Castro expect from him? What would satisfy him when he says that's not good enough for the American people? Would he prefer some sort of blustering response of what, I can't lose? Or I can't live with myself if that happens? I mean, it makes no sense at all. This is a question that was designed really to assess Biden's character, his sense of conscience right now. And he gave the very classic answer of, if I do the best I can, I'm fine with that. You know what he didn't say? He didn't say, if I lose the election, it must have been rigged. And that's something for Castro to think about. Is that the kind of answer he would prefer that would make him happy because then his candidate is sounding like the strongman persona that maybe Castro secretly thinks should be? The president? Oh, sorry. Wrong party. Wrong candidate. All right, that's it for now. Hope I gave you some food for thought. And uh, I think this is going to continue to be reverberating for quite some time in this news cycle. Thanks for watching. Keep those comments coming. Really appreciate it. I uh, can't get back to everybody, but I certainly do look at as many as I can. I try to reply to you too. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.